IP intelligence is pretty amazing because it uh, allows you to automatically make decisions about internet traffic. So it's pretty much a hands-free approach to keeping your network or your networks safe, uh, whether that's a server that you're protecting, that could be a web server, email server, whatever, you, you name it, any type of system that you're protecting with IP intelligence, you can do a lot of important things that is going to keep your systems safer. And we can get into that more a little bit later. This is just kind of like an, a broad overview, but IP is pretty much how all of the entire internet works, okay? IP actually stands for Internet Protocol. And I mean, it just makes sense that Internet Protocol is pretty much the way that uh, that things are, are going to be working together for the most part. I mean, the internet itself is really just a whole bunch of strung together networks, whether that's sub cables or uh, fiber optics running all over the place. I mean, Ultimately, what it looks like is just a whole bunch of different networked uh, together connections with communications uh, via protocols. So that's all that the Internet really is, it is a very, uh, you know, bird's eye view. And then we can automatically make decisions on do we want this attacking network to connect to our server? Yes or no. And I mean, we can lock it down to uh, like a geolocation type thing. So only people in Europe and the United States can connect or maybe we say Europe and North America. I don't know, something like that. But you get the idea. Um, we can we can lock things down by country. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that you can do country, continent, whatever, you name it. I mean, there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with IP intelligence, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and continue on here and look at why the internet is maybe not the best place. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start off by saying I'm not a negative person. I believe that the internet has some great things on it, but a great chunk of the internet is utilized for, for example, spam or internet, uh, bots uh, along with flooding. So, I mean, here we can see uh, it made just a, a pretty little graph with some dollar sign in there, like, because we're just burning money. I, I think that's a, maybe that's not a dollar sign. I, I honestly, I don't freaking know what that is, but, um, so 3% of internet traffic is, uh, is all just flooded data. And then 51% of internet traffic is, is made up of bots. And, uh, it, when I say that, I mean, um, like web browsing internet traffic. And then, 53% of email, that is definitely spam. So there is just too much spam. There is a lot of spam. I want to say like it's some insane number, like 14 billion emails delivered every day is spam. Don't quote me, but I am pretty sure. And a lot of people ask me like, hey, why did you name it R4P3? You realize that means rape, right? And yes, actually I do. Um, I'm pretty sure that's why I actually picked the name. So the whole reason behind the name R4P3 is that was kind of a joke back in the day when you were playing online games, first person shooters, you'd shoot up people in the game with uh, like, for example, sniper rifle, pop someone's head, you got raped. Ah, ha ha. So back then it was a joke before the whole Me Too movement and all of the uh, like super feminist type of things came to be. And now it's like, uh, hey, you said rape. Let's uh, let's grab a bunch of stones and throw rocks at this guy's head and kill him. OK, so um, I'm not saying rape is a good thing, by the way. I, I do not support rape in that sense, you know, like the uh, the private parts against other people forcefully like that's not the type of rape that I think is okay at all and uh, also I don't necessarily think computer rape is okay but obviously with R4P3 um, being leet speaked if you can say that but um, yeah I mean leet spoken I, I don't know but when you see the numbers in there uh, comprising the the R4P3 spelling it's obvious it's a digital word, okay? And what we're talking about here is um, instead of getting your server owned or instead of getting your server pwned, I believe that people get their servers raped. And the reason why I say it's raped is because you are forcefully placing a server or, or not a server, I should say a host within another host. So you are literally forcing 
your system upon another system in a, uh, a mounting way to gain root access or admin access. Now, if you can think of a better word than rape, let me know and, and I'll definitely change the website name, but I promise you can't because I've thought about this. Okay. Like back when I was creating this website, when I was a, quite a bit younger for the first, uh, f- 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 yeah, never mind. I, I'm not going to go into too many details there because this is not quite a, uh, a rape uh, R4P3 network history video. This is more just kind of like giving you a broad overview of the internet, the state of IP intelligence, and why it's so important. But 30,000 websites on the daily get hacked. Okay, we're talking every day. There's 30,000 websites getting raped. And <clears throat> there's 450,000 botnet hosts that were part of a large, very large botnet that was taken down around 2008, or at least uh, I think it's uh, Janka or Janka, something like that. It was a host that got taken down. That's kind of what led to the sh- takedown or shutdown of the botnet. But that was a massive botnet. I mean, that could just, that, that could throw some heavy traffic. Um, 360,000 new malicious files are detected daily by a a malware laboratory. And there's a hundred percent of slow people out there in this world. And I just had to throw that in there because I think it's quite hilarious how slow people are in adopting new, or I should say modern security protocols. I mean, we have these more secure ways for communications across the internet via uh, encrypted or more secure protocols. And then people don't even want to, uh, they don't want to use them or they don't want their software patched because it's, it takes time or they don't want to configure software patches for security fixes and whatnot. And then then we have 30,000 websites getting hacked every day and 100% slow people equals 450,000 hosts infected and so much malware coming through that it's like so annoying to uh, to block all this crap and do signatures. So we're switching from 100% signature focus more to a behavior analysis. We want to know what behavior software has on a machine and now it's not so much about having signatures for every single thing because even with signatures people can use cryptors to fud something it's fully undetectable and i mean that's irritating you know that that type of stuff is a nightmare and so now we get on to spending right people obviously care about cybersecurity because money is spent on it but also hackers stole in 2017 hundred and seventy two billion dollars from companies that's a lot of money okay 172 billion dollars is outrageous and then it's just expected that in 2019 globally there will be 124 billion dollars spent on cybersecurity. <laughs> so there's more being stolen than is being spent on uh, yeah i mean that's what happens and i think that for the most part there's a lot of catch up uh here they're trying to kind of play the catch up game and get ahead of getting all this money stolen because that uh, not only damages the finances of the company but can also have um it can have other consequences like for example your reputation as a company if you get hacked and you get thrown all over the news like your company sucks that not only costs you money now for whatever you may have lost but also there's damages there so the united states cybersecurity spending has increased by 200 200- 240 percent over an eight-year period this starts back in 2010 and i've got the uh i've got this nice little graph here showing the information from 2012 to 2018 i was going to put 2010 in here but it, it really didn't matter too too significant or too significantly But if we take a peek here in 2018, this is by the billions of dollars. So, for example, this 2018 is sick. It's about sixty six billion dollars being spent in the United States on cybersecurity. And that's not a bad number. That's uh, that's a decent number, Um, especially considering that the global spending uh, in 2019 is estimated to be $124 billion. I'd say the United States is doing quite a decent job in spending on cybersecurity. So 
We've got uh, one more page here just highlighting some accomplishments of the R4P3 network. And I I just wanted to say we made a decision back uh, around April 2015 to switch away from SMF, that is Simple Machines Forum software, over to the Zen 4.0 software. And of course, we do have a paid license and we keep that patched, updated ETC. In April of 2016, TeamSpeak was trying to buy us and they were offering to purchase our entire website along with our team. I I think they were trying to buy our team, security team. We were finding multiple security vulnerabilities issues in their software, reporting to them, and they simply could not keep up. So then when they could not um, when they could not keep up with responsible disclosure, we started going with public disclo- disclosure, aka um, like full disclosure. And that's when they started getting pissed off at us. They were really trying to buy us and we ended up talking to their CEOs. Long story short, TeamSpeak is, uh, I, I don't know if it's that they don't know how to do security, but it just seemed like they maybe did not care as much as I think uh, along with uh, the security team thought they should, but they did end up patching things. So that's good. It took some time and we really had to like force it on them and and just spam the crap out of their emails to get them to patch this one issue, but it ended up happening with uh, enough convincing. Anyway, we, for the most part, I think had an okay relationship with TeamSpeak for some time, and then we just like totally lost communication with them. And honestly, I think TeamSpeak has lost communication with like everyone. I think that overall, TeamSpeak as a company sucks really bad at communicating. They're just not a good. Um, they're they're just not a good communicating company. And I think that transparency is critical. It's super freaking important if you want to be a successful business, especially in this age. But anyways, uh, around 2017, I checked over our Bitcoin wallet. Looks like we ended up receiving four Bitcoins. And with the four Bitcoins that we had received, that translates it over to about $15,519 within one year. We made that. Now, of course, back at that time, it was not uh, the price of Bitcoin was not up that high. So back when we made that, that was less. So, I mean, I guess I can't really say, hey, we made 15 grand, but we did after the fact. And I think, honestly, a lot of the time we ended up spending the Bitcoin on server hosting back then. And if we had just held on to that Bitcoin, holy shit, that would have been cool. We could literally just have enough money right now to file all the LLC paperwork and get everything all taken care of. And yes, by the way, in 2019, incorporating is something that I plan to do. Absolutely. And so by the end of 2019, I do plan on incorporating. We're going to anonymously file for an LLC and I'm going to be working with a legal focused business firm that keeps all identity protected kind of behind like a confidentiality type of thing. So it's going to be really cool. I look forward to doing more awesome things with our 4P3 network and hopefully not offending too many people along the way. If I really do have to end up changing the name for whatever reason, like maybe the legal firm that I work with doesn't like the name, then you know what? Hey, maybe I'll change the name. But I really don't think that I will have to. <laughs> and and <laughs> if I do have to, I'm going to like do everything within my power to keep the name what it is because I really don't see a problem with it. And if anybody is offended by seeing R4P3, I just, I think that you've been brainwashed by the media to like have such a negative. I I, I don't know. Like (laughs) I I just feel like rape is not a joke in like the uh, obviously like human uh, sexual abuse type of way. You know, that's, that's not a joke, but R4P3 is not the same as our APE. So like we, we can all kind of agree that, but I don't know. Some people just don't see it that way. Anyway, don't get raped and um, definitely use uh, really good services out there. Uh, some of which are free. Like for example, Cloudflare is free. Uh, watch, uh, <laughs> watch guard, not free. Uh, that's uh, a good firewall though. Affordable, not free, affordable. Uh, Liquid web, not affordable, expensive hosting, 
They do offer DDoS protection, though. And they also have just decent dedicated servers. So if you want like a very reliable and fast uh, dedicated server, Liquid Web is the way to go. Pricey, very expensive. If you're looking to stay on the more affordable side of things, you can go with OVH. But um, I mean, that's totally up to you. I would recommend checking into various DDoS protected dedicated server hosts and kind of benchmarking them, maybe doing a few tests on it yourself. So doing like stress testing, because it's always better if you stress test and take your stuff down than if you have a website running that's live in production and then someone just comes in, attacks you and brings it down when you're under heavy load. That's not a fun day. So I hope that you have a great day. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I look forward to uh, I look forward to talking with you soon.